We've all got scars, some on the outside and some on the inside, but we can't be defined by our scars. I've spoken with some extraordinary people about how they've become empowered by their scars. This is I've Got Scars, baby. So thank you for taking the time. It's been so long since we've seen each other. Yes, it's so is. long. But I am, man, I just need you to know, first of all, but we're going to get started. Okay. But I just want you to know, first of all, it has warmed my heart, like, oh, uh, just seeing you, thanks. seeing you shining. But it's, it's something about you that, and I know that people feel it because it's just so different and genuine and beautiful. Like, I, so I just love seeing it. So I just, I was like, okay, let me see what's up with her. Cause <laughs> as soon as this uh, quarantine is over, you gonna be, you a rocket. I already yeah. know. That's the plan. I mean, we That's can, it. Our, uh, seat belts and stuff on there, getting our, our gear and equipment on. Okay. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> So, yes, this is I've Got Scars, baby. And, you know, really for this show, I, you know, as a burn survivor, part of, you know, the healing element, like what I felt like I needed for myself was to know that I wasn't alone. Like that was something that brought me comfort. Like I would pray and I asked God, I was like, why do I have these scars? Why do I have these scars? And then when I was 25, I think you know my story. I don't um, know this story. So I was burned at a year and a half. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can see it. It's here and also on my shoulder, but I was burned at a year and a half. I had six surgeries between the ages of two and 16. And I didn't look at myself in the mirror until I was 25. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't look at your body. I didn't look at my body. I would look at myself in the face, but like, say you, you know, take a shower moving over to you know get dressed and put your pjs on i would completely bypass mirror and like was that? All of that. did someone tell you you had scars at a young age and that it wasn't you know why why was that well when i was when i was three years old i remember specifically i was in dance i was in ballet class Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was the first time, like I, we had to wear unitards. So you had a little scoop neck, right? Yeah. And so kids would come up to me and they would say, what's that? What happened? What's that? Uh, and they would try to touch it, you know, like those types of things. And that was the first time I was like, oh my God, like, you know, cause both, you know, my parents, my grandma, like they all knew it wasn't a big deal, but my introduction to the world was in, you know, dance class. And that was the first time that I was like, you know, somebody said, hey, what happened? That's weird. And I asked my teacher, can I wear a t-shirt over my unitar? She was like, no. So I quit dance class. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was just one of those things where then I started a cycle of hiding. So a part, you know, like from, I would just wear, this will be buttoned all the way up normally. Like I didn't wear a swimsuit. I wore my first swimsuit without a t-shirt when I was 25. So, you know, you just, you create a cycle of hiding and that was my whole thing. And so I created this show because the revelation I got when I was 25, because I always loved to write songs and I wanted to encourage people and all of that. And I felt like God was like, well, how are you going to encourage anybody if you're not even looking at yourself in the mirror? You ain't even free. Exactly. Exactly. So I, that started my journey toward getting free. Yeah. And so, um, and so what I felt in my spirit when I was 25 was I felt like I was just like, Audra, everybody has scars, some on the outside, some on the inside. Absolutely. And so that actually gave me a sense of peace. I felt comfort. I was like, okay, all right, well, maybe I can like, do this. So I started my work. Yeah. Learn how to look at myself in the mirror. That took about a six month process, but I started my work. And so I created this show because I wanted other people to know that you're not alone. Like right. you don't have to feel like, oh, you can't, you know, like you're, you're just doing it by yourself because everybody has scars. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about You know, everybody has different types of scars, whether they're physical, emotional, you know, like people been through some stuff, but that's okay. 
you know? So I love your story and that's, I wanna, I wanna hop in and talk about your story. So you are, everybody knows Miss Tabitha Brown. You are a wife, you are a mother, you are an influencer, you're an actress, you're, I mean, vegan food vlogger, <laughs> like Whole Foods ambassador. I mean, it, it can go on forever. Yeah. And I, I, I love it. I remember we, we met initially in Tasha Smith's yeah. acting workshop back in the day. And you just always have been such a very sweet spirit. So I'm very, very happy to see things opening up for you and just, I mean, skyrocketing. It's Thanks. beautiful. But I know it hasn't always been like this. No, absolutely not, Chad. Absolutely not. <laughs> 22 years in the making. Okay. So I, I want to talk about that because there are so many people that, you know, they have dreams they have things they're looking to do and they're like, uh, what's going on? Uh, what's happening in these streets? It's not, it's not going down. What's the problem? When is it coming, Lord? Exactly. Right. Exactly. So that's what I want to know. Like for you, like before all of this, like where was your mindset? What was going on in your life? What was happening with you? Uh, I mean, well, you know, I had, I've been pursuing this since 98. Mm -hmm. um, on a professional level, dreaming as an adult, trying to figure it out. And mm -hmm. it's literally been 22 years of a bunch of no's, a bunch of small victories, but mm -hmm. consistently having the dream inside and saying, I got, it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. you know, but I, honey, I worked while I waited. I always tell people that we got to work while we wait. Uh, mm -hmm. But something inside of me always knew the day would come. The things that are happening now, my mother kind of prophesied that to me. Um, mm -hmm. I a lot of the things that had, are happening now that I told my husband years ago. And he always says, man, this is crazy. Remember you used to say this? I was like, yeah. But wow. I did so many things uh, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, we met in acting class, so I was always working towards it. Yeah. Being, being here in Los Angeles. Yeah. But uh, there was even a time that I forgot about dreaming. You know, mm -hmm. I first the first time I moved to LA was in '98, right? Well, mm -hmm. not in LA, but California, mm -hmm. now, down in Orange County. Thought I was close to Hollywood, but was not. Mm -hmm. from someone that I did not really know, uh, and she was pretty much kind of taking advantage of me. I was working two jobs at 19 years old, mm -hmm. and we had only moved out here to try to pursue acting, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't even get to Hollywood. You know, I was nowhere near the. Uh, you know, the area of where you can audition and do any of those things. Yeah. And I knew nothing, right? I knew nothing. I just knew I had this dream. And so I um, was there for a couple months. And then my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, he came out. Our, our original goal was we would get our own place. Man. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell him how bad things were. But when he came out, he was like, this don't make sense. You working two jobs, barely, you know, able to live. Yeah. And you working in Hollywood, you ain't doing anything uh, close to acting. We should move back to North Carolina where it's cheaper, mm -hmm. save up for one year, then move to LA where you can really pursue your dreams. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, well, that's a good idea because it is easier to save money, you know, back home because mm -hmm. it's, everything's cheaper. Yeah. So uh, we moved back to North Carolina and that one year goal turned into five years, a baby, a house, jobs, cars, wow. uh, and all these new responsibilities along with a forgotten dream. Wow. I really... In those five years, it kind of convinced myself that now, of course, A, I'm young and I done had a baby. I can't pursue no acting career. I can't pursue anything in entertainment. Uh, I missed out on my opportunity. And I really believed that. And then one morning, something shook me awake in my bed. I literally felt like, like an earthquake or something in North Carolina. And I, when I woke up and I opened my eyes, I heard a voice that sounded like thunder. And the voice said, this is not the life I planned for you. And it scared me. And I literally got on my knees and I started praying. I said, now God, if this is you speaking to me, I need you to show me a sign today. If not, I think I'm going crazy. And later that day, I told my husband what happened. And later that day, we were on our way to the malls. And on our radio, uh, the DJ, who was Buster Brown, came on the radio station. He said, hey, this is Buster Brown. I have a new TV show uh, on the WB network and I'm holding auditions looking for a female co-host. 
And I went crazy in my car. I told my husband, I said, there's, we in Greensboro, North Carolina, no auditions yeah. ever happened. I said, I prayed to God and asked him for a sign today. And they are talking about audition on the radio. This is my sign. Yeah. And I ended up going to that audition and I booked that job. And I became a co-host and learned how to produce my own segments. My first interview was LL Cool J. Wow. And I went on to interview Nas, Lil' Kim, all these different celebrities who would come and do concerts at our town or at the local, you know, at colleges in the area. And that's what got me dreaming again. And so from there, I started back doing theater. I started doing films, anything locally I could find. I would drive three hours to Wilmington, North Carolina, just to do extra work so I could know what it felt like to be on a real set. So I used to do extra work on One Tree Hill. And I did all this for about a year. And then I told my husband, I said, now it's time for us to move to Los Angeles. And he was like, no, we can't go now. We, we got this baby. We got this house. And, you know, we're doing all right. And I was like, I'm telling you, God is pulling me. Yeah. And I heard his voice. I got to go now, you know? And he was like, oh, all right, look, we're going to have to plan it. And so we planned it for about nine months and we saved up $8,000. And we moved to Los Angeles in 2004. And we were here, you know, when you hear God's voice, you think, oh, when I get to where he got me going, everything going to be lined up perfectly. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so when I got here, I just knew somebody had to be waiting on me and nobody was waiting on me, okay? Mm. Nobody was waiting on me. But I was just so excited to finally get on my path of, of figuring it out. And so uh, we get here October of 2004. And, and literally months after getting here, my mom got sick back in North Carolina. And so she was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. Mm. The whole world stopped again. And I went back and forth to North Carolina weeks and months at a time to help take care of my mother until she passed away in 2007. Mm. Uh, that was the hardest time of my life, you know, mm -hmm. seeing your mother pretty much transition from being this amazing, vibrant woman who was happy all the time and yeah. uh, full of life, be trapped inside of her body, not able to move in her final days, not able to talk in her final days. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had to go through that. But it left me scarred, you know, mm -hmm. it, it left... Uh, a, a hole inside of me. Yeah. But it also encouraged me to live like there is no tomorrow. Mm. And so I started as soon as after my mother passed away, literally within a week's time of being back in LA after her funeral and everything, I was on set doing like an indie film. I just made up my mind, I'm I'm just gonna pursue whatever I, you know opportunities come my way, I'm gonna do it. So I jumped right into doing it, all kinds of like little indie films that would go straight to Blockbuster or back when there was a Blockbuster yeah. or Walmart or Target or whatever. So I did like a lot of, like maybe five or six back to back. Mm -hmm. um, I did a couple of little things on BT. I did a couple of commercials and uh, had a lot of small victories. Never any big breaks though, you know? Yeah. But that voice that I heard would always just keep me pursuing. Mm -hmm. And because I had this dream inside of me that I didn't place there. Yeah. Whenever you have a dream inside, we didn't make up the dream. Yeah. It, it was put there, right? Yes. And so I would always focus on that. Uh, and then me and my husband decided, you know what, we want to have another baby. And so I told him, I said, uh, yeah, I want to have another baby. You know, we literally on the same day, we had no plans to have another baby, but we both woke up on the same day and said, you want to try to have a baby? And he wow. was like, I'm going to have a son. And I was like, oh, me too. And so he was like, but what about your acting career? Because at this point, I was just kind of starting to pick up momentum. Yeah. I said, well, what I know about Hollywood is that it ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. And it'll be there when I'm done. And living builds character. Mm -hmm. The more I live, the more I can have a character. Right. Inside of me, right? Yeah. And so we decided uh, I would take a break. And I got a regular nine to five job and went on to get pregnant and have my son. And that was supposed to be like a two year thing where I would you know, get pregnant, have my son and, and be with him for the first year of life and then go into, back into acting and, you know, quit the nine to five job. Mm -hmm. so that didn't work out as planned. Mm -hmm. And uh, that ended up being a couple of years. And then, in, uh, but I was able to still, you know, do auditions and go and shoot sometimes. Still a lot of small victories. I mm -hmm. was a couple of co-stars and guest star roles and things like that. Um, and then January of 2016, I woke up with a headache in the back of my head. And that headache rested there for mm -hmm. one year and seven months. 
and it was accompanied by chronic fatigue, chronic pain, and my body started to just kind of shut down um, and, and attack me. And mm-hmm. I just could not get well. There were days that I uh, could not get out of my bed. There were days where I would fall when I would walk. Uh, I lost my vision on a day. I literally thought I was going to die. Uh, some days were better than others. There were there were days where I could, you know, walk and be amongst people and nobody would know because I hid it so well. The liberties of being an actor, honey, we know how to turn things on to make everybody think we're okay. Yeah. But I was suffering. Um, I, I had you posting things on Facebook about that. Yeah, yeah. I suffered from depression and anxiety and uh, really thought I was going to die. I really honestly thought I was going to die. I had a lot of the same symptoms that my mom had when she first got sick. Mm-hmm. So then I just convinced myself, oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die just like my mom did maybe for two years or so. And um, as time went on, my, it's about a year and a half, my daughter came home from school one day and she said, oh, mom, we saw this documentary at school today. I think you should, should watch it. And it was What the Hell. And mm-hmm. so uh, we watched it together, me and my husband. And the thing that got me is when they said that not all diseases are hereditary, that we eat the same thing causing the same disease. Yeah. And, you know, for me, my mom died at 51 of ALS, which is a rare disease. There's no cure and there is no cause of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad is 68 and he's the oldest male to ever live in our family. And I thought meat was a common denominator with heart attacks, strokes, and all these different ailments that hit my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was also the only thing I had not tried. And I had been trying all these different drugs that doctors had given me over the last year and a half, and nothing was working for me. Yeah. I just could not get well. And that was something that I was willing to try. So I told my husband, you know what, let's do a 30-day vegan challenge and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And we did. And in the first 10 days, my headache went away. And I started feeling better. And I started having more energy and uh, getting back to feeling normal. Yeah. Um, and so after the 30 days, I never went back. And it literally changed my life. And in so many during, ways. In so many ways. In so many ways. And during that time, I had what I call my coming to Jesus moment in my bathroom when I was mm-hmm. sick. And I told myself, you know, I, I really got in the mirror. If you've never tried to look at your soul, it's an uncomfortable feeling. And I got in the mirror and I really looked to search for my soul through my eyes. Mm-hmm. And it was so uncomfortable because I realized, you know, I had not been truthful with God. Mm-hmm. And I and I prayed to him and I told him, I said, God, I have not been honest with you. Okay. L- look like he didn't know. Okay. I told him, I said, Lord, I have been habitually praying, just praying out of habit, mm-hmm. but not really believing what I'm asking for. Mm-hmm. I didn't believe that I would be healed. I didn't believe that I was going to get better, you know. But in this particular day, I told God, I said, you know, I'm I'm at my wits in and I'm at the bottom now you know I'm at the darkest of the darkest place and God I need your help mm-hmm. if you heal me you can have me like I ain't paying no more if you heal me God you can have me and I'll do whatever you ask of me but please God just heal me I want to live and that day I just released something in my bathroom it's like the old me kind of left that day um and I was still not well I had this new hope. Yeah. And about two weeks later, I had a dream and I saw myself in my dream on a TV show. And in the dream, I was free. I had like, my hair was in a little afro and mm-hmm. I spoke with my accent where, you know, when you met me, I always wore my hair long and straight. I always tried to cover my accent because that's what I was told to do. Yeah. But not in this dream. In mm-hmm. this dream, I was completely free and happy. Yeah. And so... When I woke up, and the thing about me is that ever since I was a kid, my mom always told me I have a gift of dreaming. That is the gift God gave me mm-hmm. uh, because my dreams always come to pass or they send me messages or signs. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I prayed and I said, now, God, I'm not out here auditioning. I ain't doing stand up anymore because I used to go do stand up trying to get a TV show. Uh, right. Because, you know, we try it all. You know, girl, we try it all. Stand up. Yes. You know, we try it all. And so and I was trying my best to get a show. I was like, Lord. And so when I got up and I prayed, I said, the Lord, I'm not auditioning. I'm not doing stand. I'm not doing anything right now. I've been on disability for over a year. Mm-hmm. So I asked him, I said, what was this dream? And I prayed for him to reveal it to me. And then I heard a voice that said, start doing videos. And I was like, start doing videos? Mm-hmm. Why would, honey, why would I do a video? <laughs> 
And yes. I, you know, because I really thought that people who did videos, they didn't take serious in Hollywood. Not yeah. not actors, you know. Mm -hmm. And he reminded me, he said, Remember, you said if I heal you, I can have you and you do whatever I ask of you. And I said, Ugh, I did say that, didn't mm -hmm. I? And so he started, you know, talking to me as I'm sitting in my floor. He said, Listen, when you out trying to get a TV show doing stand up, you were reaching 15, maybe 30 people a night. That's you true. started doing videos, you reached thousands in minutes. And I thought, Well, Lord, I don't have thousands of followers to reach in minutes. Like, what are you talking about? But I was determined to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing videos. When I first started, I was just telling the same jokes sitting on my bed that I would tell on stage, stories about being a wife and mom and all this stuff. And then as the weeks went on and my daughter came home from school and told me about the, you know, the documentary and I did the vegan journey, mm -hmm. uh, I was like, okay, you know, I, I think I, I might be on to something here, right? Mm -hmm. Because when I did it, you know, we did it as a, as a, challenge together as a family. We did a 30 day vegan challenge. Oh, and, right. then, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the first 10 days of doing it, my headache went away. Yeah. And so after that, after I had, you know, been doing these videos, I also decided to shave off all my hair in the process. Cause I was thinking, oh, I just need to be free. But the moment that I decided I'm going to go vegan and I said it out of my mouth, yeah. the same person told me to start doing videos, told me now tell people what you're eating. That's the only reason I ever started doing videos is because I had a dream and I heard a voice and then God told me to tell people what I was eating. And I was so scared. I was so reluctant because A, I had shaved off all my hair. Yeah. Now I'm going vegan. Not just a challenge. Now this is about to be my life. People don't think I lost my mind, especially in my hometown. Like, you know, in the South, they're like, that girl crazy. She didn't cut yeah. up all her hair. She didn't me. So I was so nervous, but I was obedient. And so I said, okay, Lord, I, I'm going I'm to start doing these videos. So I started doing videos telling people, hey, y'all, I'm going vegan. When I find vegan options, I'm going to just share it with y'all. And literally, that's how it started. And it would be 30 people watching. And I'd be like, Lord, where are these thousands of people and, you know, uh, thousands of people watching in minutes, like you said. Thousands is 30 people. My family and my friends in North Carolina. And so mm -hmm. as time went on, that was August of 2017. And then in October of 2017, I told my husband, I said, you know what? I feel so much better now. I'm ready to start back auditioning and getting out there, but I don't want to work a nine to five anymore because I don't want to get stuck back into a regular schedule. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go drive Uber. And I really felt like I'm going to get discovered in my car. I'm going to pick up a director or a producer or somebody. Mm -hmm. And my husband said, really? Uh, you you going to get discovered in your car? I was like, yeah, I'm going to get discovered in my car. Because that's just how I would think things. Yeah. And... Uh, I literally dropped somebody off December 30th of 2017 by Whole Foods. And I said, ooh, Whole Foods be having good vegan options. I'm gonna go ahead and give me a little breakfast. And so I went in there and they had a vegan sandwich that I had never heard of, uh, vegan bacon. I was like, vegan bacon? Like a BLT, but vegan? And it was called a TLTA, but I called it a TTLA. But I was like, ooh, Lord, let me get that. And I ate the first half of the sandwich so fast, sitting in my car, because I was on my Uber break. And I did a video and posted it to tell people I found a new vegan option, this new sandwich. And I went back to drive a new Uber. I didn't think none of the video. I had my notifications off because, honey, wasn't nobody watching my videos like that. I would get a couple hundred views in a week or so. And by the time I got home and turned my phone back on, that video had over 50,000 views. And the next morning had over 100,000 views. And I told my husband, I said, I think I'm going viral. And he was like, what that mean? I said, I don't know. And he was like, you want to make some money? I was like, I don't know. And within four days, Whole Foods reached out to me and said, we saw your video. We would absolutely love to work with you. And I became their brand ambassador. And I went on to do so many different campaigns with them and other plant-based companies and tour the country for the last two years. And literally from that day, every time I do a video, it's thousands of views in minutes. Every time I go live, it's thousands of people watching. And it has been that way consistently for two and a half years. And now my whole life has changed just from being obedient to the spirit, into the voice that I heard, and being consistent. Yes. Even though it didn't make sense. Even though it it was hard, I was broke. Um, you know, I, I, I worked, listen, when I first moved to LA, yeah. first five years I worked at Macy's, right, in Central City. And on my lunch breaks, I would walk the block. You know, you walk around the block for exercise or whatever. And I walk by CAA and I would point to it and I said, oh, God, one day, Lord, 
I believe that I'm gonna be at CAA one day. I used to tell my husband, you know what, CAA, they're gonna come to me. I ain't even gonna have to try to get in there. They're gonna come to me one day. He'd be like, really? The biggest agency? I said, yeah, CAA. And literally, they came to me Ooh. amongst tons of other major agencies. Literally, they came to me and I got to choose, right? But the power of the tongue and, and the mind. Yes. Powerful thing when you believe. Even though I went through so much anxiety and depression and uh, hard times being broken to be rebuilt, to be who I am now. Because now, you know, I don't cover my accent. I don't wear my hair one way. I don't starve myself anymore to try to be thin. I am who I am. And people love me for just being me. And so because I went through all of that for so long, it's so important to me to tell other people, honey, we are enough just as we are. Mm. I went through that for so many other people, so they won't have to. So being free and being you is the best thing that you can ever do for yourself. Oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> this the sermon didn't happen. If you, like, <laughs> that was the sermon for real. I mean, there, that's, it's, that's, that's, it's real. It's real because yeah. then you think, because a lot of times you think that, okay, well, I've been through all of these different things. I've had all these things that didn't work for me. I feel like I failed. Right. But a lot of times, and that's a part of what I talk about is turning your scars into your superpower. That stuff that you think was like the worst part of you. Maybe who I am. Is, it can set you up for your blessing. Yes. And be the foundation of your blessing. Absolutely. Honey, it's part of who I am. It's my, it's the foundation, right? Because yeah. I'm able now, because I went through anxiety and depression and I've dealt with panic attacks and all that, I understand other people who are in that space, right? Mm -hmm. I can help with how I speak to them by spreading love, by making people feel seen, heard, yes. loved. Um, we all need that. No matter how many people are in the room, sometimes some people feel alone. Uh, and I and I know that feeling. Mm -hmm. I went through it, right? And so I like to be able to use that yeah. to identify with other people. I know how hard it is hearing no, 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 no all the time. Mm -hmm. And how special the one yes can be. And sometimes we don't get that yes, but once every couple of years. Yeah. You know, as artists, you know. Oh, I know. And during that time, I have to remind people that still your winning season because you're living every day to yeah. develop yourself. You're in training, even if you ain't in class. Yeah. You living is your training because if I did, if if we just sat sat around and did nothing and just waited, you wouldn't be able to play a mom. You wouldn't be like if I had a never said, "Oh no, I can't, I can't have no baby, baby," because you know we can't have no more kids. If I do that, I ain't gonna be able to act. But now I know, I really know how to play a mom, right? I, listen, for 10 years, I have had on my vision board, or, or longer than 10 years, I want to be America's mom. I've always said that. I always said, I want to be known as America's mom. I am Claire Huxley meets Roseanne right in the middle. That's my TV show. I've said that consistently for over 10 years. And now people refer to me as America's mom. That is faith. <laughs> And having a vision and and holding tight to that vision. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like, like yes. what? Because here, here's the, the interesting part. Because when I look at things, when you look at Hollywood, when you think think about the industry, you like having children can you would think that's oh, don't do it. They're gonna get in the way. How are you gonna go audition? Right. Uh, having a family, period. Because now you still have to be a wife. Yep. You still have to take care of your husband, your children. You still have a home to maintain. And a lot of times that's frowned upon. Yeah. But when you're really doing it God's way, when you listen and you're obedient, you can have it all. The, the whole concept of can you really have it all? Can you really have that balance? You know what I'm saying? It's like you see it. When you're when you when you do it from a place of authenticity, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know the thing is, I think that we as as artists create this 
mindset that we can't have it all, that it's frowned upon. Mm -hmm. But that is us. Mm -hmm. Whatever we tell ourselves, we write. If we say we can't have it, we can't have it. That's the truth. If you say we can, honey, we can. We have to, it's our self-talk game. We have to, we have to tell ourselves everything we want. Yeah. We have to. But listen, if I wasn't a wife, I wouldn't truthfully know how to play one. Yeah. Right. If if I if I didn't take time to develop that, my my family is my foundation. Honey, yeah. if Hollywood blow over tomorrow, I still got my family. Yeah. Right? I still have that. And that's what's most important to me. It's most important to me. Everything else is a bonus. I'm yeah. thankful. I'm I'm so very thankful for to be in this space that God has blessed me with. Yeah. But it is a bonus. But I honestly believe I'm living in purpose. Because mm-hmm. I, I have a passion for people. I have a passion for helping. Yeah. Um, for spreading love. That is my true passion, which I believe is a purpose for me. Um, and of course, acting is a passion for me. But people, I feel like God placed me here for people to yeah. help um, with my voice and what I'm, what I'm doing. But none of that would be possible if I had not lived the life I've lived and went through the struggles and the ups and downs that I have for the last 22 years. You are bringing me so much hope (laughs) and inspiration and joy in this moment because no, seriously, like I came out here young, 19, okay, God, what am I supposed to do? What, you know, like I'm creative. I want to do these different things. And then I just was like, uh what am I supposed to do where am I supposed to you know how am I supposed to move through this like I can write songs I can do this I act or whatever but I love that you said it's not so much just about the acting that's not just the focus of the purpose right what I started to what I wound up discovering about myself is I felt like I love to encourage people yes but I also feel like I love to encourage people because I feel like I've needed so much encouragement in yes. my life. Yeah. You know? And so I was like, okay, God, well, I just want to put my encouragement through my music and mm-hmm. then get that out to the world. Or, you know, I was like, should I just be a therapist or should I, you know, how, how, how should it move? How should I do it? But I mm-hmm. love that it comes together in a, in a way where you're like, Hey, yeah, you love to act and all of that, but the core, your core desire, your your purpose mm-hmm. is people. Right. And yeah. the fact that you've already had certain experiences that were unpleasant is that thing that is going to help you connect to the people in an authentic way. Absolutely. And then from there, you get to have this, the, the extras, as you say, right. you get to have. Right the acting, the certain amounts of success, but it's coming from an authentic place. That's, I think that's incredible. (laughs) And I think it's beautiful because you get to do that with your family and people get to see you doing that with your family. And so now they're like, oh, (laughs) I got my family too. Right, we everybody, right. Family. that's how we tell the people, we all family, right? We all family. Yes. The, the fame is what gives us a voice. Um, yes a responsibility on how we use our voice once you get that and i take yeah. it serious because yeah. I, I did it wrong for a long time and this time i'll do it right i love it i love it so much so <laughs> how has it been working with your family oh it's amazing we just being us we just <laughs> being us so and, and i and it was important to me you know to start bringing them along because i'm not me without them Mm -hmm. I mean, without them, you know, with my daughter, I want her to learn how to, you know, have her own business, Mm -hmm. how to market herself and brand herself all while staying true to herself. And Mm -hmm. if I had had someone that, you know, my mom, no one knew about the entertainment business in my family. I was the only one that woke up with this dream one day as a little girl, you know, Mm -hmm. and so my parents were always very supportive, but they had no idea how to help me. And so now I'm like, you know what? I have to help her because I know she has a desire. So uh, it's important for me to show her the ropes and help her along the way. But it's a, it is a gift to be able to have my family with me along the, along this amazing journey. Absolutely. I love it. I love (laughs) it. So 
I want to make sure that we highlight some of the specifics. So whoever is watching this, they like, okay, let me. This is where I take my notes. Like, yeah, this is what I mean, you know? like I, I want to go back to the key parts of your journey that were transformative. Like you mentioned, you mentioned one listening. So when you when you were in North Carolina, you're like, okay, I got to go. Yeah. So for the step by step of things is listen. Is there anything that you feel like in that did it just hit you or was it were you just open to it? Like what do you how do you feel like you were? Were you just receptive? Like, okay, God, just tell me something. Well, he woke me up, right? We have to, when you say listen, we honestly, we have to listen. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we hear, but we ain't listening, Mm. right? So when he speaks or gives us signs or sends confirmation, we got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And I honestly believe that we know when it's time. You feel it. Mm -hmm. I always say the air feels different. Yeah. The air feels different. When there's a shift happening, the air starts to change for me. I always tell, you know, I tell my husband, I tell my daughter, I'm like, something about to happen because I can feel the shift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Start to change in the atmosphere. Those are things that we have to be mindful of. We have to be mindful and we have to be completely open to oh. that, you know, to that voice and understanding. And not think that we know better than the voice. Right. And I, I thought I knew better for a long time trying to do it my way. Trying to do it my way, child. He said, okay, I'm going to let you go and try to do it your way. Go ahead. Go on. But that's what we learn. That's what we learn. That's where we learn, honey. The way. Oh, yes. I hear you. Okay. So be open, listen, pay attention to the signs. And then when you came out here, it wasn't popping like you thought it was going to pop. No, be patient and work while you wait. See, I'm telling you, people, I'm writing it down, too, for like, hey, people, this is what's going on. This is what she didn't say it. <laughs> it makes sense. So yeah. even though it doesn't look like it's happening for you, maybe I, you know, maybe I heard wrong. It's like, no, 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 no. Keep moving. That was a mistake. Keep moving forward. And you got to also understand that it doesn't always come looking like you thought it would look. Mm. I I never wanted to do videos. Mm. I never wanted to do or had any desire to do anything with food. Never. Mm. It was never on my list. These two things that changed my life were never on my list. I was just obedient when God told me to do it. Mm. I was just obedient. But Mm. I, I went into it blind. I went into it literally only by faith and obedience. I had zero desire to ever do videos or anything with food. And both of them changed my life. Wow. So when he tells us something mm. that sounds crazy. Yeah. Because he wants all the glory on it. Right. Yeah. I can't give this to no, no credit can go to anybody but him. Because they yeah. never, never want to do nothing with food. She ain't no chef. Tabby never want to do videos. I'm an influencer, not because I wanted to be an influencer. It's because this was the life that God put before me. Yes. But if I had been, like, closed-minded, not obedient, I would have kept saying no. Because I did. I I kept telling God, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But he reminded me. He said, remember in the bathroom, you said, if I heal you, I can have you. And you'll do whatever I ask. And I said, I did. So let me be obedient. And let me do this crazy thing where God is telling me that thousands of people in minutes will watch my videos. And now it's millions of people. Oof. But I had to be obedient. Yes. Be obedient. Yes, I love and that. And as, as it pertains to being your full self, because like you said, back in acting class, when we were in, in class together, it was like, okay, I, I was told I need to have my hair like this. I can't use my accent. Hold, try to hold that accent. Back. Yeah. So what was that shift for you? Was it sudden or was it, what was it for you? It was the release. 
You know, it was it was my second chance at life. And this time I said, I'm free. So when I tell God he could have me and I would do whatever he asked, that means I have to be who he created me to be. Mm. He didn't create me to be this fake tag that was trying to fit in when I was always meant to stand out. So I had to be who he mm. created me to be. And that's mm. this tag. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That... That's important. That's so important. That's and that's a part of my journey too, because like I up and like covered up. Yeah. Like I would be sweating in the summertime with a turtleneck on, just so you wouldn't see my scars. Yeah. And so that's it. Is that there's a part of you that's like, well, how can God bless something? Yeah. That God didn't really create. Right. God didn't God created you as you are. Exactly. Ax, you, got, you got the accent, you got the hair is beautiful. You're not, you know what I'm saying? Not this other thing. We don't have to be anything outside of who we are in order to be successful. And I and I love that. Your yeah. authentic self. We gotta be free. Yes, freedom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh child. This is just this is just remarkable. Um Here's what I want to say. I just want to say thank you so much. That right there is a mouthful for everyone. Just working on that, it's just like, then you can allow God to be God. Yeah. And to, you, you know what I'm saying? Like you, there you go. Here I am. And I love it. It's beautiful. And so thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. I just need you to know all my, like, so many friends are like, I love her so much. When you read that story, the children's book. Yes. Girl, my heart was warmed. I was like. Yeah, such an amazing. So you just, thank you for being you because it's beautiful. We need it. And thank you for sharing your story because it's going to empower so many people. So. God bless you and hugs and love for you and the family, okay? Thank you. And listen, the same to you. I'm so very proud of you. I'm so proud of what you're doing now. Uh, your story will continue to empower and change lives and help so many people break out of their shell into their freedom. So, honey, you keep going. Thank you. You, you're doing. you got purpose, honey. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right now. Love you. All right. Love you too.